This is Annie Grace, and you're listening to this Naked Mind podcast, where without judgment, pain, or rules, we explore the role of alcohol in our lives and culture. Hi, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. I am so happy to be here with you today. And today I have a really special guest, Elena Cavan, and she is actually known in the UK as the queen of holistic living. She's the owner and founder of Milestone Detox. And not only does she have a unique sort of story in relationship with alcohol, which I'll ask her about, but she also just has so much expertise about how to holistically cleanse your system and, and really in the first days of, of going alcohol-free. So she's going to be such an incredible sort of source of inspiration and also just really practical information today. So welcome, Elena. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm really excited to be here and to be sharing with you. I've so enjoyed listening to all of your other podcasts. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. So I just feel like I'm enjoying, like joining a bigger conversation. Yes, absolutely. And it's so cool that it's sort of across, um, you know, the UK, which is where where you live. And there's so many people just sort of globally starting to ask these questions and wonder how to live a happier, healthier life. So it's really exciting. Yes, I think you're really putting your finger on a pulse here. It's awesome. So I want to just dive right in. But first, can we start a little bit with, you know, you sort of have a unique story around your own choices with alcohol. And I'd love to just hear about it from your perspective. Sure. I was a very small child. My mother, who's from Columbia, South America, would talk to my brother and my sister and I about her family and about her experience with alcohol. And my parents never drank. And she would say to me, your your grandfather was an alcoholic and many of my brothers drank a lot so alcoholism is in your blood you have a pre a genetic predisposition to it so don't even go there don't try to fight it because if you if you try it you'll you'll just get into it very quickly and and it wasn't like she was painting a scary picture she was just very matter of fact about it and um and, and my parents just said, no, you know, no alcohol, no smoking, no drugs. And um, in fact, I, I liked myself growing up, you know, and I liked my thoughts. I, I was a poet and I liked music and, you know, I, I liked kind of being present. So um, when that time came in our teen years where everybody started trying alcohol and, and, stepping outside of themselves as what alcohol kind of tends to do to you, it just never, never appealed to me. And I think at the back of my mind, I probably always had my mother's warning saying, look, if you try this, this is where, where, you'll, where, where you'll land. So, um, but I don't like rules and I don't do well with rules. So when I moved to the UK, I married an Englishman in Seattle. And then when I moved to the UK, he's just like, come on, you gotta, you know, you gotta know what this is about. So within the first couple of weeks of living here in the UK, he took me to a pub and, um, and I got drunk. And I just remember um, in South West London trying to walk down uh, a line on the street and saying, this is really dumb. I can walk on this line and I'm drunk. And, you know, it's just so stupid. And I, I, it, it just, I didn't like it. And so, and so that was kind of my, my big experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I know people think I'm weird and I and, and that I don't relate but um I I just we have a in the detox we have a, a no JCB policy no judgment no criticism no blame and I've always been like that and so it's like you know I've I've been able to go to the pub and be very happy being there because I just love people so much and just being there being present with them drinking whatever you know I'm drinking water whatever but but just being okay with being me and them being them Oh, that's so cool. And I think it's great to have you on here because it's so rare that we, you know, in our culture, meet somebody who isn't a drinker, but isn't a drinker for reasons that it just sort of didn't appeal or they had a very severe warning from their mother or whatever the case is. It's much more often that we meet someone who isn't a drinker because they've they've been there, they've done that, and they've kind of come out the other side. And so often when you have the perspective you have, you know, getting drunk for the first time as an adult, 
without ever having done it before, it just wasn't that fun, you know, because you hadn't felt this tolerance. You weren't using it to numb anything. There wasn't any sort of added benefit for you. So feeling kind of dizzy and the wall, you know, funny mentally just isn't that enjoyable. And then also going on to, you know, just being able to be present. What I love about this conversation is so often, you know, with my approach, it's all about kind of returning to the state of mind of a non-drinker rather than it is about getting sober. So it's so much about, you know, getting back that, that need. And when you go to the pub, you certainly don't feel like you're missing out by not ordering a glass of wine. You're doing that purely on choice because your experience with it, you know, it wasn't that great when you did it once as an adult and you weren't doing it for any other reason. So I just love that. I find a lot of inspiration in that story because I do believe that all of us can return to that state of mind just kind of through the right untangling of our thoughts. So it's it's just really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, one of the things you said too, the JCB, that's brilliant. I think that's that's amazing. I love the the idea of just no judgment, no criticism, and no blame. I, I think that's really important. But can you talk to us, you know, detox might mean a different thing there than it does here. And um, certainly you don't run a rehab center or anything like that. It's a, it's a much more holistic approach for kind of every person. But can you give us an idea of, of what the detox is? And then we'll get into, I know you have so many specific tools for the audience of just how to kind of maintain their health and sanity as they're literally detoxing from from the first few days of drinking well i think often i mean detox is quite a popular term now but often it does have connotations that are hangovers from maybe the 60s and the 70s with drug and alcohol so sometimes when i say to people i run a detox center their immediate association is with rehab and so i just have to clarify no it's not it's not rehab it's it's actually a process of stopping to put the bad stuff in and then putting a whole lot of good stuff in and allowing the body to do something that it was actually designed to do so the body goes through its own natural detoxification cycle every day and the liver really kind of kicks in its engine at about 2 a.m. in the morning and then detoxes right through till maybe 12 p.m. So our body is continually cleaning itself out. And, um, and most people are fine with um, the amount of toxicity that they're exposed to. But sometimes people tip um, the, the level and the balance into a realm where They just go into detox overload and their body can't cope with it. And whether that's too much alcohol and and drinking for the liver or maybe that's um, environmental because of pollution. Um, We had a a man in last week who developed a sensitivity to Wi-Fi and electromagnetic smog. And so he's had to really change his life because of of his body's inability to to cope with that. So it's actually about supporting the body to do something it was designed to do anyway. Um, so what are what are some of the symptoms that somebody can look for if the the scales sort of have tipped over to the side of being quite, you know, especially with alcohol, having their body can't handle it anymore? Like how does that start to feel in the body when the toxins have built up to the point where the body is not flushing it out appropriately on its own? At a physical level, brain fog and lethargy. So you're just losing energy because primarily alcohol is a dehydrator. It's a diuretic. It's a dehydrator. So when the body goes into um, chronic dehydration mode, which is dehydration at a cellular level, then you really, really begin to notice a decrease in energy. So just... Um, and, and accompanied with that is low mood because brain cells are 85% water. So if your body is getting to the point where it just doesn't have enough water at a cellular level, then you just don't think very well and you don't think very positively. So I would definitely say those are the first two sorts of things is the mind is in the brain and then the mind is in the emotions and then your physical get up and go. Yeah, I would just anecdotally say that my experience of how much energy I have now to do things that I never thought that I would do. I have a a relatively new baby. And I remember when I was drinking with both of my other children, this period between, you know, zero and six months being just absolutely 
I felt like I was run over by a train. Now here I am 39 years old, so I have every reason to be more tired and more lethargic, yet I've got this baby and and I haven't felt kind of depleted once. I, I feel very energetic, although I think she sleeps worse than either of my sons. So I can just kind of say that life with alcohol and without alcohol in a very specific circumstance of sleep deprivation, um, it's, it's night and day. And also seven years later, because I had my sons quite early and I had my daughter quite late. So that's, that's so interesting. I can really well, relate to that. That's a word about resiliency, isn't it? That when you had the, fir- the your sons the first time round, you may have been less resilient because your cells were loaded up with that that alcohol, and now you don't have that lying around in your system. And even though your baby's not sleeping through the night, you've got that inner resiliency to bounce back, even though you are sleep de- deprived. So that's that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the body is incredible in its ability to adjust and compensate. And th- that's one of the things I talk about in the, in the detox is just like we are designed to survive and the body does phenomenal things in order to survive. And in a state of depletion, it will start pulling what it needs from wherever it can get it. And so over time, when you're talking about chronic dehydration or chronic um, nutritional depletion, then the body will start taking things from its own self to try to survive and keep going. And that's when the illnesses and the disease start kicking in, sadly. Yeah. And I remember, you know, with both of those early baby stages, I remember being weepy. I remember being depressed. I actually got on anti-anxiety medicine, sleeping pills, you know, in an effort just to kind of get through the day. And now none of those things are needed. You know, the only thing I really drink a ton of is water and, you know, some coffee Um, and not even much coffee because actually that keeps her up more. But, but actually it's, it's such, I had never really, and it's so interesting, but I'd never really looked at that before. Like I've had so many benefits, but until you said, um, just the energy levels. I'd never really specifically kind of made that comparison. And I think one of the coolest things about experimenting with life alcohol-free and getting it out of your system is that you you can just compare with what's happening now and how you used to feel. And that's that's just such a, such a cool thing. You said something about nutritional depletion. Um, can you talk a little bit more about like how alcohol depletes the body and what how to, how to then nutrify the body based on, on your knowledge and experience when you are kind of trying to recover from that? Sure. I think the first and primary thing that I always talk about is water. Because um, when we are drinking any toxin, whether that's alcohol, sugar, caffeine, in order for the body to process that toxin, Um, If you imagine you have a cup of um, a glass of wine, it will take the body at least a glass and a half of water just to cope with the toxins in that wine. Okay, so if if you're drinking, say, a bottle of wine, say that's 750 CLs, it would take that much and half again of water just for your body to sort that, that alcohol out which means that any water you are drinking throughout the day, that's not available for your digestion system, your, um, your mind, your, your, the other parts of your body. And so what happens is that the body becomes dehydrated at a cellular level. Secondly, what happens is that in order to deal with that toxicity, the body, as I said earlier, begins to pull nutrients. And one of the nutrients that gets depleted is your vitamin B and vitamin B has you know a number there are a number of vitamin B's and um, and that the vitamin B is largely responsible for our nervous system health which again is the mind it's the emotions so I was um, I, I just love how in that film food matters one of the experts that they have talking mentions how when um, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous started Alcoholics Anonymous, he healed himself of, of his alcohol problem through having intravenous high dosages of vitamin B. 
So he he was so excited about healing himself through his 12-step program, his mind, and also through having these large injections that he was like, right, let's start this program. Let's get everybody, you know, being loaded up with these vitamins and um, going through these 12 steps. And, you know, sadly, he wasn't allowed or wasn't able to launch his um, intravenous high dosage protocol as a part of the AA program. And so very often people are unaware of the power of vitamin B supplementation. Now, I've got a really fantastic colonic irrigation therapist, and she went to um, Las Vegas, or maybe her daughter went to Las Vegas, and came back telling us stories. And one of the stories she was telling us is now, in some of the casinos, in the middle, kind of in the wee hours of the morning, they have medical staff on hand who are offering intravenous vitamin C and vitamin injections. Have you heard about this? No. And they're, they're starting. They're starting to do this in the city of London as well because they recognize that if you have, I mean, this is really bad, but if you have, um, you know, a high dose of a vitamin, it'll perk you up and keep you going. I mean, it's a bit like you vomiting up that last glass of wine so that you could keep drinking the wine. And so, so it is happening in the world today where, where people understand the power of high dosages of intravenous vitamin B, vitamin C, and, um, and they're using that to kind of help them recover from the alcohol and keep partying. I, I actually, I had a, a film producer in the detox and she talked about how we were just talking about strategies on how to kind of cope with a very stressful and, and rigorous sort of schedule. And she was saying how on the set, they always have doctors who are there offering intravenous injections of high dosages of vitamins, usually vitamin B and vitamin C. Wow. So isn't that interesting? That's so interesting. And I, I mean, I've seen this rise in like trucks that come, you know, the morning after to kind of give you intravenous um, fluids and whatnot, like these hangover helpers. And I'm sure there's, there's vitamins involved in that as well. But I would yes, not heard of the thing in Vegas awesome because enough. that's quite, I mean, yes, you're making somebody possibly feel better, but it's also quite sinister because you're also giving them, it's sort of like this phenomenon of Red Bull and vodka. Let's, you know, the vodka brings you down, the Red Bull brings you up so then you can keep drinking more. And guess what? More people end up dying or getting quite ill with that. It's, very disturbing. I had no idea. That's, I haven't been to Vegas in a few years. Um, wow. That's I'm a, a little bit speechless, but specifically. I for, haven't seen that with my own eyes. So I can only say, you know, it's Chinese whispers, but you know, it, by all means, somebody check it out and let us know. But I'm, it, it's, it's just, we're at a place now where there is so much knowledge. Yeah. So people are, are and, and if, if money is to be made on knowledge, then the money, the service is going to be there to provide it. Um, we're a non-medical detox center. So at this point, we are not offering high dosages of, of, um, of vitamins. But I did have a client who came who did have a drink problem. And her doctor on the NHS had prescribed her high dosages of vitamin B. So that was really heartening for me that she had an enlightened uh, doctor in London who recognized that her body needed that uh, nutritional support to, to, to cope with, with the depletion that was being caused through the alcohol. And then, so if somebody was to, you know, say, okay, this sounds interesting to me. I mean, is it something where you could go to a natural like food store and buy these vitamins? Um would they be high enough dosages or is it really something you should talk to your doctor about? I would always go and see a naturopath because naturopaths are doctors who are trained in, in, in specifically in, in this realm of, of supplements and, 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 and dosages. And so I would, I would always advise coming under the care of a healthcare practitioner um, because there are a lot of scam supplements out there, sadly, and this is one of the things that we talk about in the detox, that supplements really must be food state. They really must come from food. So for example, um, iron is a metal that you can find in the earth. And 
um, there are some iron supplements where they take the metal iron and they grate it into fine, fine pieces, and then they pack it into these capsules and then they sell it to you as an iron supplement. But the reality is, is the human body cannot absorb iron in that form, which is where you get all of these kind of constipating um, um, consequences. But we are designed to absorb iron when it comes through the plant. So for example, the, all of the dark green leafy vegetables, they're loaded with iron. We eat that and our body's like, oh, fantastic. You know, plenty of iron, no anemia. So there is a, a fantastic book um, written by um, Brian Clements from the Hippocrates Institute in, in Florida that talks about the supplement scam. So people are more interested, they can learn about that. But it's really important to buy a supplement that says food state. So that means that, you know, everything in it was taken or extracted from food, which is therefore in a form that our bodies can absorb. That's great advice. And I actually, I, I see a naturopath <clears throat> myself who I've been seeing for two years, and it's been, you know, phenomenal how much you learn because not only do they treat you and give you advice, but they also teach you what is going on, which is amazing. And I think now you've mentioned it. I can't believe I haven't thought of having him on the podcast before, but I will certainly, certainly do that and get his, oh, his you sort of must. advice. Yes, absolutely. You must. Because things are quite different between the UK and the US as far as what is allowed and what's permitted. And I would say we have more freedoms here with more um, technology that's coming out of Russia and Germany and, you know, things that aren't really allowed at the moment in the U.S. Oh, that's so interesting. That's really, really interesting. So the bottom line is, you know, Food Matters, I haven't seen it yet, but it sounds like an excellent movie and that's available Absolutely. on Netflix. Supplements must come from food sources and that's just highly important no matter what. And then the best thing to do is to find a naturopathic doctor, which you can find anywhere. There's there's tons of them. Board certified naturopathic doctors are all over. Um, and then I really wanted to talk to you a bit about the gut. We've been talking about dehydration and the brain, but I know that the gut is somewhere that everything really and and comes from your body is just so reliant on what's happening in your gut. And so can you talk to us a bit about what happens, especially with alcohol because of its high sugar content and high carbohydrate content in the gut and, and what sort of things we can do to kind of overcome those, educate us and then give us some advice, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think the, the first thing to know about the gut is it has as many or more nerves as the brain. So you, you often hear this term, the gut brain, um, you know, thinking in your gut, making a gut decision. Mm. So mm. the brain and the gut are very, very connected. And what happens is, well, in, in all of us, we've got a certain amount of healthy bacteria and a certain amount of bad bacteria in the gut. And, what ha and, and we're going to call one of those bacteria is Candida albicans. That's the most kind of popular um, bacteria that that people struggle with in their day-to-day -day lives and so what happens is that when you feed your body um, food that the candida absolutely loves like alcohol sugar carbohydrates that bacteria grows and what can happen is as, as long as you've got more good bacteria in the gut than bad bacteria your body's going to cope and you're going to be okay but often what can happen is if you overfeed that bad bacteria, it can surpass the amount of good bacteria that's in the, in the gut. And then you've got what's called a candida overgrowth or candida, candida isis or something. It's, 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 it's not very nice. And sometimes it can become quite aggressive, bite a hole in the, um, in the gut, which is only one cell thick, and begin to spread throughout the system. And that's often a type of, of leaky gut syndrome. So what can happen is, is people can begin to manifest aches and pains throughout their bodies and not realize that the root cause of that is actually a candida overgrowth in their system. And they'll go to the doctor and is, is it arthritis? You know, is it gout? Is it this? Is it that? 
very often people won't think to think about the gut. So one of the first things that we address in the detox for everybody, but in particular for people who want to pull back on their drinking, when they come to me is I always talk to them about the gut and say, you know, chances are we're, we're looking at, you know, a bad bacteria that's, that's um, outgrown its britches here and, um, and needs to be pulled back a bit. And, um, and we do that, first of all, by flushing it out physically or manually through colonic irrigation. And people just get very embarrassed looks on their faces when I start talking about colonic irrigation. Because if it's something you've never had, if it's something you've never watched or seen, the mind just goes into all kinds of imaginations of what it can be like and what sort of experience it is. Um, but actually, it's it's a very non-invasive um, procedure in that it, in our clinic anyway, it's administered by a very, very experienced um, therapist. And um, what happens is that the candida, be the, the, as the gut begins to get flushed out, it takes usually two to three colonic irrigations to begin to access where the candida likes to hang out because it likes to hang out quite high up in the large intestine. So um, when I was first um, training and, and first setting up the detox, um, we had a client who, who allowed me to come in and observe. And the therapist showed me the candida as it was coming out of the person. And it physically looks like champagne or it can look like the froth on the top of a beer. It is literally fermentation in the gut. And it's just clear, bubbly liquid. And you think, oh my word, that fermentation, as in that rotting, is in me. It's living in my gut. And the consequence of that is that I'm going to have low energy and I'm, I'm going to also have a low, um, a low um, mental alertness because that's weighing me down, because those nerves are connected to the brain. And, and what I like to share with people is that this candida has a mind of its own. It really wants to grow and it really wants to be fed. And so it begins to say, feed me, feed me. And it gets really, you know, aggressive. So sometimes people are so hard on themselves because it's like, oh, I'm such a you know, pathetic, I'm a flake, I can't say no. And, and it's like, well, actually, if you think that you've got alien invasion going on in your system, you want to get the alien out and you want to blame the alien for, for what the alien is doing. And if that alien is just like really um, driving you towards something, then it's kind of nice to be able to step outside, step aside, objectify the craving. So it's not just pathetic me but it's actually this thing that's taken over my system that is really driving me towards something. So, so the exciting thing about this is that, you know, working with your mind and, um, you know, aligning your conscious and subconscious brain together, that took you some time. And you had to do that, and only you could do that for yourself, Annie, right? Whereas... When you have a colonic, you just lie on a, on, a, on a bed. It looks like a massage bed. And the colonic therapist just does everything for you. You know, you've got 20 to 30 gallons of water gently coming in, gently coming out. And so literally, you get flushed and cleaned out. And, um, and so what we usually do, our protocol is between three and five colonics within a week. And then at the end of that, the therapist will do a probiotic implant where she injects 80 billion healthy bacteria right up into the large intestine or the colon, which is exactly where you want that, um, that healthy bacteria to, to recolonize and to be. And often people will feel so much energy as a result of that because it's just like the, the healthy bacteria actually um, break down some of our food and release vitamin B. So that bacteria isn't just for the decomposition of the food in our gut, but bacteria is also responsible for nutrients in the system. 
So does that make sense? Oh, that's, that's so, I mean, it's so cool because we actually, in my book, I talk about it being sort of the alcohol monster that feels like it comes into your brain and is calling the shots and you really have to starve the monster and kick it out because it wants more alcohol. And so we personify it, but I've personified it and I've understood some of the brain science behind it. You know, there's certainly a craving caused by your brain is compensating. And when you take the alcohol away, that compensation still exists for a period of time. So it's out of balance. Um, But then this other aspect of there's actually bacteria growing in your gut that's overgrowing that feeds on the alcohol. So it's telling your body very intensely that it needs alcohol. So the craving, you know, it really takes it from, uh, like you said, there's something wrong with me. Why can't I have more willpower? Why can't I handle this? You know, even after perhaps dealing with your psychological stuff and you're still having this craving that you can't explain, it could really be because there's something an overgrowth of, of candida in your gut. And if you were to solve that, your cravings might just disappear. I mean, it's such a hopeful, hopeful message. I think that's brilliant. And if someone was going to go, especially because I know that you're in the UK, and if someone was going to go to you, um, I know your your website is milestonedetox.com. Is that correct? Yes, it's themilestonedetox.com. Okay, and we'll put it in the notes as well. So themilestonedetox.com. But if somebody was here in the U.S. and they were looking for sort of colonic treatment, is there any advice you would give on how to find a therapist? Yes, you can Google it. And I mean, here in the U.K., that we have a couple of associations that um, accredit the the colonic therapist. So you just want to make sure that you're seeing... Um, a colonic therapist who is part of a larger associ- association and monitoring body. But there, you know, there's a fantastic explainer YouTube video called uh, Candida Albicans. And I always recommend um, people who are wanting to recover from drink and, um, and similar types of issues with with sugar as well to watch that explainer video. So if you just type out Candida Albicans into YouTube, it'll come up quite, you know, at the top and you'll see it's, it's kind of a drawing um, explainer video and it's about 30 minutes long if I remember, but it's actually, and it was made in America. So it's American and it's really good because it really explains actually how dreadful um, a Candida overgrowth it is. And how the diet in 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 the kind of the the standard American diet we call it the sad diet um, really um, feeds that as well. So um, I just wanted to go back to your question earlier about um, the lifestyle. So what what happens once you know you're working on your mind through the Naked Mind sort of program? You've um, plugged into a naturopath, so they're giving you the nutritional supplements you need. You've plugged into a colonic therapist, so you can just get that initial um, clean, cleanse to support your system. Then, then what's the next step? And the next step is absolutely making sure that you are eating probiotic food in your diet every day, because you've got to keep um, bringing in that healthy bacteria into the system. So I don't know about um, there, but here in the UK, we've got a real um, movement of interest all around kefir at the moment. And kefir is a very, very old type of healthy bacterial culture. And it doesn't have to be dairy. It can be goat's milk. It can. We can buy coconut kefir here. You can make um, your own kefir with with water and feed it sugar. And so, so I know a lot of people who have really turned around their health and healed their guts by taking kefir. Um, another thing is raw krauts. So raw fermented food. Now that's different from the sauerkraut that's in the jar at the supermarket because the, the sauerkraut in the jar at the supermarket has been preserved with vinegar. And there, I don't think there's very much bacteria left, frankly, because it's it's been bottled at a high temperature. Um, so at your local health food store, you can buy raw fermented krauts or you can make it. And it's very, very, very simple to make. And I teach people how to do that in the detox as well. But, you know, most Americans have heard of kimchi and um, traditional kimchi is a raw um, fermented 
Chinese cabbage with chili. So if you look at every culture around the world, every culture had its raw fermented food as part of a daily diet. And that's because it's so important to keep those healthy bacteria coming into the system. Because, um, I mean, I don't know about, about the US, um, but in the UK, we consume more ready-made meals than any other country in Europe. 80% of those ready meals are imported and we are the most constipated country in, in Europe. And isn't it interesting how in order for a supermarket to sell food, it has to ensure that it is bacteria free. And the only way that you can do that is to heat the food above a certain temperature, which will kill all of the bacteria. So that's great because it kills the bad bacteria, but it also kills the healthy bacteria too. So what's happened now is we're living in a very sterile world. So I would say, especially for people who are recovering from um, uh, any sort of um, alcohol excess, that it's really important as part of their daily diet to bring that raw fermented food into the system. Have you seen what I'm talking about? Yeah, so um, Kiefer, I, I was raised in a very holistic uh, home. So these things were kind of, uh, Kiefer was basically a mainstay in our house and um, it's K-E-I-F-E-R. So I know we're pronouncing it differently, but people can go and just look for it. It would be in the dairy section and they have brilliant flavors. Just make sure that you get one that is raw and hopefully that is organic if you go to a, a natural food store. And then um, Krauts, absolutely. You just have to make sure that oh, it has sure. live bacteria on it. And those are, are brilliant. We have some in the fridge right now. They just taste so good on literally everything. I mean, it's, it's such a nice taste. And then I'm a big fan of kombucha and I don't know how much that is made to the UK, but that's just a, a probiotic tea. So it's a fermented um, tea and it, it is, again, has lots of raw live cultures in it. You want to stay away. There's a lot of kombuchas on, it's become a big thing in the U S there's quite a few that have huge amounts of sugar. Um, obviously that defeats the whole purpose. So you want to stay away from the ones with huge amounts of sugar, but there's still a lot that have very little sugar. And so if you look at the label and you can get something with a, just a few grams of sugar, that would be the best. And it's a bit of an acquired taste, but it's also, it's a really nice sipping drink, especially if you're giving up alcohol, um, because you can just sip on it nicely. And so I think that's, that's really great advice. Um, there was yes, one. and there are, there are a couple other foods that I, I like to mention that are healthy probiotics. Because often people think yogurt when they think of healthy bacteria, but actually yogurt has got a whole lot of dairy in it and not a whole lot of bacteria. And what we want is food that's just got a higher healthy bacteria content in it. So, um, you know, the Asians have um, tempeh, mm. which is a, a fermented soy cake. And that's, that's a good fermented food. You can buy raw miso, which is great for adding flavor to things. That's, that's a raw fermented food. You've got the kefir, as you call it. Um, we've, here we've got some fantastic coconut yogurts that have come to market, which are very high in healthy bacteria. And the, um, the, the fermented food. So, and then, of course, you have your drinks. So definitely want to bring that into the daily on the daily plate um to to just help compensate and it you, it is unusual to try when you first try it because it's it's kind of off <laughs> but you soon get used to the taste and then your body actually craves it it loves it yes yeah i totally agree with that it's absolutely true um well this has been amazing i mean i've already taken so much of your time but this has really been so insightful and so helpful is there any other um last sort of tips you'd you'd like to leave us with absolutely so remember i mentioned earlier that the liver is doing its natural detox cycle from about 2 a.m to 12 p.m so one of the things that you can do is support your liver in the morning. And we do that in the detox by having um, a mug of water with lemon. And what, what we do is we, in the detox center, 
we juice the whole lemon with the peel because in the peel there's the lemon oil and the lemon oil is the most detoxifying part of the lemon. So the lemon juice is very alkalizing for the blood and, the le and, and detoxifying, it's, it supports the liver, but the lemon oil in particular is very helpful. So um, um, diffusing lemon oil is very uplifting, but also it's going to help detoxify the body or some people will put some of the lemon drops on the balls of their feet on the on their feet and that will help the body with its detoxification so what i would say is definitely um, developing the habit of having lemon first thing in the morning if somebody has been um, drinking a lot we need to heal the liver and the liver is one of the organs that heals itself beautifully and one of the um, one of the good healing liver juices that I like to make is a piece of fresh turmeric and two grapefruits. So you peel the grapefruit, put that through the juicer with a chunk of fresh turmeric, um, well as much turmeric as you can stand, and um, and maybe a little drizzle of uh, linseed or flaxseed oil, you call it, because the, the body likes to uptake those colors with a bit of fat. And that is a real, it's delicious with ruby red grapefruit. It's a really tasty um, juice, but that's a real liver healing juice. Um, so it's really about understanding what supports the liver and what will help the liver to heal. And that, that's, a, I mean, that's a whole other subject in itself in terms of um, liver supporting food, there's bone broths and there's all you know kinds of wonderful things that you can do to support and help the liver to heal. But those are just two simple things um, that will really support it. I've got one more tip. Can I give you one more? Of course, no, I'll this is brilliant. You, and we'll have to have you yeah. back because there's just so much information. <laughs> Love to. Uh, here in England, we have a product on the supermarket shelves called Andrew's Liver Salts. And because I didn't grow up in England and because I'm not a drinker anyway, it was something that was, um, that was talked about in the detox by some of my older clients. And then I went and investigated and learned about it. And basically, it's an old-fashioned hangover cure. So if people drank too much, they would always go to the Andrew's Liver Salts. They'd dish themselves up a couple of teaspoons of it, put it in a glass of water, mix it, and then knock it back. So looking at that, the, one of the main ingredients is that, in that is um, sodium bicarbonate, or bicarbonate of soda, baking soda. So um, the, the thing that we haven't mentioned about alcohol yet is how acidic it is in the blood, and that's a whole other subject as well. But one of the things that will help cut down on the hangover is a drinking a lot of water before you drink after you drink and secondly rebalancing the chemistry of the blood so that if you've put in a whole dose of acidity that you then bring in a whole dose of alkalinity to bring the levels into balance and so the alkalizers are your bicarb of soda so a teaspoon in 500 mils of water and you stir it around until it's clear, and then you drink that, preferably on an empty stomach, so last thing at night, first thing in the morning sort of thing. And then um, no, that's, that's a heavy gun. That's a really good heavy gun. Not so heavy, but still as, as potent, is your organic apple cider vinegar. So you put in a teaspoon of organic apple cider vinegar into a cup, maybe a mug, add a bit of warm water, and have that first thing in the morning or last thing at night. Uh, your aloe vera is also very alkalizing and healing for the gut, and then the lemon water. So those four things are my kind of, I say to people, if you know you're going to a party or an event in the evening, have that in the morning, the morning of, and then the morning after, and, you know, preferably the whole week, but that that will really help to rebalance the acidity that, that comes in with the alcohol. And those are things most people have in their kitchen cupboards, you know? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's so helpful. And the acidity is such an important topic. Um, but we will 
definitely need to have you back, I feel, because we could talk more about the liver. There's so many helpful, helpful things here. And um, I'll be transcribing this all. I'm putting it in a blog post. So I'll include as many links as I can as well into the post and into the notes, because I think there's just so much knowledge. And I would say in the U.S., it's probably more important than in the U.K., but if you're going to squeeze the peel, please get organic lemons. There's so many pesticides on the outside of the lemon over here, and um, <clears throat> it's just, you'd be putting in toxins when you're trying to detoxify. So it, I think really important to try to get as much of your fruit and vegetables as possible organic and um you know, especially kind of, I guess, in the U.S., I think it's it's even more important. But um, yeah, thank you so much, Elena. Like this has been just, I mean, awesome. There's so much good information and so practical. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I know that our listeners will as well. Well, it's a pleasure to share. And you're you draw it out to me because you're so enthusiastic and you want to learn. And I can see that because you're hungry to learn, do you know, it just makes it such a pleasure to share. So thank you. It's, I have it's, lots it's of fun. notes. <laughs> I'm like scrib <laughs> scribbling notes the whole time. No, it's, it's been so good. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you. Take care. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.